Well, my father came to England in 1934, and in fact, he was set up in business by um, a firm in Germany called Herrian from Fortsheim, who were leather goods manufacturers out there. And, and he was their agent in England for all their merchandise and started traveling in, in, around the country, selling the merchandise to Fortnum and Mason and Harrods and some of the old department stores that no longer exist, like Bourne and Hollingsworth and Swan and Edgar, which disappeared in the, I think, the 60s and the early 70s, um, and was based in the West End in those days, in Vigo Street, which is just off Regent Street, uh, where you know he remained and the head office remained for many, many years. I think he immediately he arrived, he opened his own business. He wanted to run something in his, himself and be his own boss. And, and that's what happened. He, he came over and set up a limited company immediately. My grandfather also um, had his own business. He, in fact, had a military tailors and tailoring shop in Germany, um, which had been in the family for generations. So I think business was in the blood. And, and tailoring to leather goods, it is a different craft, but it's still a craft. So I think it's something that was inherent. It was there already. And he was keen for my father to set up his own business and, and backed him when they came to England in the 30s. To start the business, my father, first of all, opened a small office and showroom in the West End of London and concentrated mainly on London in stores like Harrods and Aspreys. Fortnum and Masons and Smysons, um, who were looking for high quality merchandise, which in those days came from Germany and abroad. Um, and he, as the agent, went to see them and sold them the products uh, that they wanted. And then he started traveling in the UK to towns like Leeds and Sheffield to some of the independent department stores that still existed in those days. We then, in those days, were selling things like leather suitcases, which of course now don't sell or hardly sell because in those days they had porters to carry heavy suitcases. And in fact, when my father first opened or bought another business, um, a leather factory, it was a suitcase manufacturer. And we carried on making leather suitcases for quite a few years until synthetics came in and suitcases became much lighter and weight restrictions came in and, and then we really changed from making large items in leather to wallets and purses and, and the smaller products. My father loved travelling. He, he, he spoke perfect French, German, Spanish, Italian and English. Um, and, and he was a linguist, he could pick them up easily. He was gifted and lucky that he could do that. And he travelled all over Europe, he loved skiing. But in those days he travelled by train mainly. Um, and in fact, he kept on travelling by train in Europe as much as he could, even when planes were there. He, he enjoyed train travel and the, the experience, and, and it took a little longer, but you could relax, and something he kept on doing. After the Second World War, there was money about, but there was no merchandise, there were no goods. So the, the retailers were desperate to find merchandise. And that's where my father really set up and the business grew because he was able to source products from Europe uh, that they needed. And, and I always remember a story he told me that after the war, he was wandering around the West End. He was demobbed from the army. And uh, Mr. Asprey saw him walking down Bond Street and said, Ettinger, come here. What are you doing? And he said, well, I'm back now. The war's over and I'm trying to restart the business and he said come into my office and the rest is history. <laughs>